Hello everyone, I have a journaling tip for you today. I often type up my journaling and print it out on vellum, or you'll see me use these clear Avery uh, shipping labels, which is like a clear sticker. And yes, they are acid-free and non-yellowing. It does say that right on the website. These are so fun. Uh, vellum is a nice look too, a little bit. This one's clear, it's gonna blend into the background. And then the vellum, of course, helps your journaling stand out over a maybe more busy background or a darker background. So they both have their uses and I enjoy them both. So we have this layout here and I've already created this on my YouTube channel. You may have caught the process for this one, but I want to add a little journaling right down to this section. Now it just so happens that often my journaling kind of lends itself well to a four inch piece of paper, right? Because, you know, I might be lining it up underneath a three by four photo or even a four by six photo. So you can see that space is approximately four inches. So, and then of course, you know, your, your depth or size may vary, uh, but the width is commonly four inches, not always, but commonly. So here I've got about two inches. So I know I can do a four by two inch text box to house my journaling in this area. Now vellum, these are 12 by 12 sheets. You can also get vellum in eight and a half by 11 letter sheets. These come in eight and a half by 11 sheets. So what I frequently do is I will cut them down to a four inch width. So actually I'm gonna use vellum on this one. So it's gonna be the exact same principle. So I won't cut one of those yet, but here's an example. This is four inches wide and it was a full 12 inches. So we had four by 12 inches. And I will keep running this piece through my printer until it gets too small to where it will not, no longer go through the printer because there's just not enough paper for the printer to both you know, hang on to it and then print. But you can use up quite a bit of it. I do end up with some tiny little scraps you know, like this. And what I'll do with those is like this one, you know, was too short or to go through my printer. So then I'll take this and I'll die cut it into shapes, maybe sentiment shapes, you know, that I can add to cards or leaves. I love using vellum to add to my floral clusters. So even the smallest pieces are not getting wasted. So I'm gonna take you over to my laptop and we're gonna type up some journaling for this and I'll show you how I run this through my printer. Now, some printers are a little bit fussy with vellum. Not all printers love vellum and and sometimes it'll just, you know, say there's no paper in the feeder. Um, you know, there are different weights of vellum. So depending on the printer you have, you may have it run into issues with vellum. This I never have a problem with. It just goes through beautifully every time and I really love it. It's very user friendly. So here I am in my pages. I do have a MacBook, so it's going to be the same in, you know, if you have office. So basically we just have a blank sheet. I'm going to set this page. I'm going to um, click page setup and turn this into a four by six. So it doesn't matter that our paper is four by 12. As long as the width is four by six, that's what matters. So now we can go ahead and go up to insert and then we're gonna go down to text box and it's gonna drop a text box in here. Now I can make this any size I would like. If you recall, our journaling spot is approximately four inches by two inches. I'm gonna make that just a little bit smaller because the width of our paper is four inches. So this is about three inches by two inches here. So just you know, click and drag until you get your desired size here. And then we can start typing. So I'm just going to type with whatever font it is. I'll worry about changing the font and the size, um, you know, at the end to get it to fit. Now journaling does vary from person to person. It depends on your style. Some of us are really big storytellers while others just want to include the who, what, where, and when, and that is okay. At the bare minimum, I do recommend that you have, you know, the names of who was there, where you were, and when it was, because that always seems to be, you know, the, at the very least, what information you would might want to know. But of course, I like to include some highlight memories from the moment and just telling the story through my eyes. Okay, I've gone ahead and proofread my journaling. I'm happy with it. I really don't need to make any adjustments because it is, you know, fitting in the space that I have uh, provided for it. So if you, you know, 
if you had more to say, you could make the font smaller. You can change the font. I often will use the American typewriter font. It's one of my go-tos. You can see that that cuts off the bottom, so I would have to shrink it down to a 10 font, which I have done before. I'm going to go ahead and leave this as the uh, font that I originally had it on. That's Hell, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Helvetica New, possibly. But also when I'm printing on vellum, I like to have a little bit of space up top because when you're adhering vellum, it, the adhesive shows through. So I may want to tuck that underneath a layer. So that gives me a spot to adhere it. So that's just something I do with the uh, vellum. If I'm using the sticker paper, I'm gonna bump this all the way up to the top to not waste it. But again, since we're using vellum, I'm gonna bump that down. And now we can send it to our printer. So we're gonna go file, print, and with vellum, I do recommend, you know, everybody's printer's different. I do like to feed this from my rear tray, so it's not, oops, not like bending the paper or having to go around any corners. So I set it to the rear tray. And you want the quality on normal or even draft. If you can set it to draft, I only have normal and best. I'm printing on the Epson XP970, which is kind of an all-in-one printer. It does print photos nicely, um, but it's my main you know, household office printer. So we want normal. If you put best, it puts more ink, it, it, more saturation, and vellum doesn't absorb very well, and that will be more likely to smear uh, so definitely use normal or draft. So we're going to go ahead and send this to our printer. As I mentioned, I do recommend feeding this from the rear tray so it doesn't bend around any corners. And now you're getting a good look at a couple pieces of furniture I bought at a consignment store with every intention of refinishing them. But turns out I don't like refinishing furniture and I'd rather be scrapbooking. I went ahead just for the video's sake and printed it twice. On this one, I used the best quality and you can see it's the letters are distorted. It's very kind of blurry. The, it's, do you see where there's bleeding and you can't quite make out the letters as crisply as you can with this one that was printed in normal quality as opposed to best quality. Now, not all vellum is the same. Some is better for printing on. This is close to my heart vellum. If you have a favorite vellum that you love to print on, share it in the comment section below. We can all learn from each other. It's hard for one person to you know, go out and buy all the different types of vellums. So yeah, let us know what you have discovered out there in this crafting community. But we're just gonna trim that down. Now, I do wanna mention vellum or maybe I already did mention, it, it takes a while to dry because it sits on top of the paper. So you do want to just set that aside and walk away and give it time to dry because you will be bummed and waste paper if you are you know too quick with it and smear your text. So just like that, you can see how I, I'm gonna put some adhesive underneath there and I'll slide it under just like that. I'm gonna line it up with my photo there. I have more examples that I've created here on my channel recently featuring either the sticker paper or the vellum. This was a double page layout, but we'll look at this one because it has that sticker paper and you can see this is exactly four inches wide. So I did the same thing. I took this letter size eight and a half by 11 sheet of sticker paper and I'll trim it to four inches wide. So it'll start being four by 11. And then I just, just like I showed you with the vellum, I keep running that through my printer, putting my text box at the top, and then it'll just get shorter and shorter and shorter. So if I were to, you know, have an eight and a half by 11, and then just have a tiny little block of text right here, and I cut that out, it leaves kind of an awkward piece. And you would have to, you know, it's if you cut out a section, it's not going to run through your printer very well. So, you know, it just, I have found it to be the least amount of waste when I do it that way. Now, are all my journaling blocks four inches wide? No. Um, here's one that is slightly smaller. It's three inches. So my 
printer, you know, you could cut a smaller piece, but again, the four inches is more user friendly and more accommodating to different sizes. So was there a little bit of a waste on the side of that? Yes, but you know, I'm okay with that. It's minimal waste. And then this one, I've used this sticker paper and printed it out and adhered it onto this tag. And that one was about three, almost three and a half inches wide. So you can see how, you know, just keeping within that four inch window works so well. So you can see on this one, this vellum is about, that looks like it's about 10 inches wide. So what I did is in my settings in your computer, when you go to file page setup, you're gonna click landscape mode. So you're gonna turn that paper, you know, from portrait to landscape mode, drop in your text box. And then in this case, I made that text box probably nine inches by, you know, one and a half. So I, and then I, I fit it all the way up to the edge. So that's what's nice about creating in a text box is you can put that text box wherever you want on the paper. So we're in landscape mode. I've got my text box way up here and that's gonna run through my printer and then I can just cut off the edge and then I still have a big usable piece. Another thing you can do is save all your journaling, maybe create several layouts and then do your journaling at once. And then you can measure each layout space that you need for your journaling, create text boxes to fit that uh, specified size, and then just space all your text boxes out and you know print them all at once. That would probably be the least amount of waste. I don't really like to do that. I try to add the journaling. Uh, right away. Sometimes I don't because I need to look up dates, but it is my goal to, you know, put the journaling on and finish the page if I can. So I prefer to add it as I go. I do want to mention, because I'm always raving about this little Epson Picture Mate 400 printer, this is what I use to print all of my photos, and it's fabulous. I do have a video showing exactly how I use it, the app I use to size my photos, so I'll leave that linked in the description box below. But it's, you know, excellent quality, but it's small enough to be portable. I actually packed this in my suitcase and flew to a scrapbooking retreat in Ohio last fall, and I took this with me, and I was so glad I had it. So you can use the Avery sticker paper and print right on this. This will print on cardstock if you want to, you know, print your journaling out and just run cardstock through here or the sticker paper. It works beautifully. When I'm at home, I use my big office printer just to save the ink for my photos. But I do use this when I'm traveling. And the uh, vellum, I want to mention that... So unfortunately, this printer does not like vellum. I have gotten it to print on vellum before by using a removable glue dot and taping or gluing with the glue dot the vellum to a piece of cardstock. Otherwise, if you're just setting vellum in there, it says that the, you know, that there's no paper or if it does take it, it'll jam. So I have gotten it to work several times, but it's annoying because more often than not, it doesn't like it. Now, maybe if I got some thicker vellum, it would be great, but I did just want to throw that in there. It works great on cardstock, beautiful on the Avery sticker paper, but a little bit finicky with vellum or at least this vellum. I hope this was a helpful tip for you. And if you'd like to see more journaling tip videos, then definitely check out this video right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and I will see you very soon here on YouTube. Bye.